Yo, what's up guys, Memory here. Like I promised myself almost two years ago, I wasn't gonna touch this topic until it was officially over. And as of August 22nd, it ended. Vic Miana lost his defamation lawsuit against Monica Real, Jamie Marchi, Ron Toy, and Funimation. Has a pending $27,000 attorneys and sanctions fee, and everyone in KickVic that took part in this three year long online smear campaign got away with it. I'm just gonna assume that everyone that clicked on this video is either from these two groups, curious bystanders looking for context, or wanting in on the drama. For me, this video is closure. For three years, I watched a man get his life ruined by a rumor which was later supported by his co-workers, then his employers fired him, then slandered and betrayed by more VAs and trolls online, only to find out that that rumor was a lie. And they used that lie as a way to use the Me Too movement so that they can manipulate the masses as a way to falsify evidence and win both in the court of public opinion and the court of law. A lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is still putting on its shoes. What gave this lie so much power and speed to not only damage Vic's reputation within a span of a day, but Twitter is the home base of people like this guy. You know the type. The delusional, attention-seeking, immature, self-centered, aggressive types that use freedom of speech and dark humor as excuses to publicly slander someone. These individuals don't care who they hurt or what may become of you or the people around you. Why would they? They seek validation. If an irrelevant hater can't get your attention the normal way, negatively impacting your life no matter how small their role was is enough to satisfy them. Monica and Jamie knew this, and the timing was perfect. While all these kubos were busy slandering, making up stories with zero evidence, and using the situation as a way to gain pity points from the equally ignorant, us and I stand with Vic only wanted one thing, the truth. After all the digging, info swapping, and heavy researching, we debunked everything. The real sicko this rumor spreader was talking about was Monica Real's ex-boyfriend, a former Funimation employee that had sex with a minor and married her in LA. Monica says that in 2007 at IzumiCon, Vic sexually assaulted her in his hotel room and was saved by a door knock by Stan Dolan, the IzumiCon owner. The same owner that told the courts he would have remembered seeing a distressed Monica walking out of Vic's room and said if he knew they had beef, he wouldn't have invited them both back. Monica claims she doesn't condone violence in any way, shape, or form, yet her and Ron avidly condone tortious interference. Monica Real and Ron Toy for two months called Vic a predator and threatened Chris Latosh, the owner of Kamehacon, that she'd convince numerous VAs to cancel their appearance if Chris didn't breach Vic's contract and cancel his attendance. Monica Real may not put a weapon in your face, but if it hurts your livelihood, she'll definitely go into your pockets. Monica keeps telling people on Twitter, he's heard people and there's evidence, yet she tells people her and her victims owe no one proof, it's classified, files a motion for TCPA which protects freedom of speech and prevents discovery, which was one of the reasons why Vic was fired by Funimation in the first place. All the while, her 10 year long friend and fellow voice actor Chuck Huber basically told the courts, I don't know what the heck Monica and her supporters are talking about. Just like with the IzumiCon owner, if he had saw or heard anything, he would have sided with Monica no problem. Chuck Huber isn't some con owner Monica sees once or twice out of the year. Chuck has worked with Monica, Jamie Marchie, and Vic for over a decade at Funimation. And the reasons people from Funimation dislike Vic is because he's difficult to work with, his Christian faith, and because they think he's gay. They spent 10 years speculating on Vic's sexual preference because of his pants? yet never said nothing about him being a predator? As you guys can see, they did not like this man. You think they wouldn't have jumped at the chance the second word got out of any allegation back as early 2000 Monica and Jamie got out? Why wait 15 years later for a random to start a rumor so they can come out publicly about their experiences and never thought to report to Funimation, much less Chris and Sean who equally don't like Vic? Why start this tweet war that when people ask for contacts, you threaten them with your boyfriend and homeland security? How are you going to blame us for tearing the anime community apart and turning people against each other when you started all this in the first place? And Monica wonders why people are still attacking her. It's because she made an enemy out of the people who asked for context and made us look like the enemy when she herself spreads vitriol and plays victim when her and her friends get a taste. Threatening us with your boyfriend. What? Let me tell you something. There is nothing threatening about a man who strikes his wife just because she's trying to tell him to stop having her son hit her and you support that nonsense. This dude's a punk. Don't threaten us with a guy that can't even hold a marriage. So there you have it. Avidavits from three witnesses that don't know what the hell Monica is talking about, revealed she condones tortious interference, and for the past decade, never once reported or told a soul at Funimation or made a police report about Vic's behavior. So the big question I'm sure the curious people who clicked on this video will most likely ask, if everything you've shown and say is true, then why did Vic lose the case? 
Trust me, I was shocked when I heard the reason too. So much that no matter what happens going forward in the case, it won't reverse the decision. So further discussion on this would be pointless. Remember the three affidavits that I covered from Stan Dolan, Chris Latosh, and Chuck Huber? Well, according to the courts, they were invalid. The court document states that Vic withdrew the evidence he presented the first time he filed the lawsuit. Keep in mind, he lost the first ruling. So now he's appealing the decision, meaning the evidence he withdrawn is now invalid according to the courts. He couldn't use it in his second amended petition. Therefore, without the evidence to prove that he was defamed, how the heck would his appeal have overturned the ruling? If I have picture evidence of you hurting me and then I burn it and then come back with a copy, according to the courts, that copy isn't going to help the case because I already withdrawn the evidence that I've already shown. But you want to know the worst part about all this? The court documents state that because Vic Mignogna is a public figure, calling someone, in this case, Vic Mignogna, a sexual predator, falls within the broader principle that a speaker's individual judgment that rests solely on the eyes of the beholder and is mere opinion. Basically, what that means is if someone from the Crosstack community makes a tweet that blows up saying that memory likes to fuck plastic dolls because the character I mean in BB Tag is man-made and they damage my reputation and my sub count and revenue depletes, if I took their ass to court in Texas, I would lose my case too. Because in Texas, calling someone a sex pest, a predator, a assaulter is not defamatory. God, I don't live in Texas. But seriously, I doubt this appeal, if filed with all three affidavits, would have made a difference. Cause Texas court thinks tweets are harmless and any evidence proving otherwise is invalid cause everything these lying witch hunting antagonists on Twitter said about Vic was mere opinion. This is why I quit reacting to Rooster Teeth in 2019. Hate everyone that sided with Kick Vic and look at my comments in anger asking me to invest whatever time I got left on this earth reacting to any content involving Rooster Teeth. I don't give a fuck how good the product or content is. If the creator is someone I don't approve of, their creations are of no value to me. I, just like Hero Hey, moved on. I have a new audience now and I took up animation. Hero Hey has half a million subs now and is continuing his news reporting content. Good for him. As for Vic, he got what he wanted in the end. Anime Matsuri created their own anime dubbing studio with Vic in two movies they got rights to. Not only is Vic able to continue his work, but now he can meet his fans again and continue giving attendees an awesome experience meeting the voice behind their favorite anime characters. So to everyone in I Stand With Vic, pick your heads up if they're down. Vic is alive and continuing to do what he loves. That's more than enough for me to stop talking about this controversy and hope for the best in Vic's new journey with Anime Matsuri. And to everyone at Kick Vic, the next time you feel like canceling someone, do it with facts.